What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new GMK Tech Nook Box 2 Plus. Now I kind of wish they would do away with the Nook Box name theming here. But on the channel, we've taken a look at a couple of their mini PCs. Most recently, the Nook Box 5, which is the palm-sized 4K mini PC. Big fan of it. Powered by quad-core Intel 5105 CPU. But when it comes to the Nook Box 2 Plus, which we're taking a look at in this video, this is going to be one of the most powerful mini PCs that I've taken a look at from GMK Tech so far. So this is powered by an Intel Tiger Lake i5 CPU. As you can see, it's definitely a small PC. Up front, we've got some USB 3.0, USB Type-C, dual full-size HDMI ports, and on the bottom here, you can see that we have our intake vent for the built-in cooler. Inside of the box, you're going to get a 65-watt power supply, and I'm actually glad to see that they're using a barrel jack instead of USB Type-C, because in the past with these little mini PCs that I've reviewed on the channel, I have run into power constraints with the lower-end USB Type-C power supplies. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we have our 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, and Thunderbolt 4. We will be taking a look at an eGPU attached to this, and uh, performance is pretty great with something good connected to it. Over here on the right-hand side, we have a micro SD card reader, and around back, we have our power in, two full-size HDMI ports, two more USB 3.2 ports, and a gigabit Ethernet port. This mini PC comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I kind of wanted to see if there was any upgradability at all to this unit. I wasn't sure if it was soldered to the board, and unfortunately, the 16 gigabyte version only comes with a single stick of RAM, and this is really going to hurt the integrated GPU performance. But it does have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. We've got two slots here, and adding an extra stick or just two 8 gig sticks will definitely help out. We're going to take a look at some benchmarks on single channel versus dual channel. And I would highly recommend running this in dual channel if you want to do any kind of gaming on the iGPU. It's unfortunate that they only have a single stick in here. But they do give us the option to add more RAM here, and we can swap out that M.2 SSD. Plus, in the top half of the shell, we can add a 2.5 inch SSD. Comes with all the cabling and hardware we need. Got everything up and running. We've got Windows 11 here. Everything's been really snappy with this little setup. And keep in mind, right now, we're actually running with single channel RAM. So using this as an everyday desktop, aside from gaming with that single stick in there, is going to work out just fine. I really haven't noticed much of a difference here with web browsing, email checking, even 4K video playback. I've been a big fan of these Tiger Lake CPUs as long as they're running at the correct wattage. And luckily, the way they have this little mini PC set up right now is at 28 watts out of the box with a burst up to 64. And while gaming, you'll see it around 35 watts on average. So we can get really good performance out of this little CPU the way it's set up. We don't need any third-party applications to try to up that TDP. So overall, if you were interested in picking one of these up as an everyday desktop for video playback, you want to do some email checking, web browsing, photo editing, even light video editing, the 1135G7 is going to be more than enough. I mean, this is a snappy little setup here. I do want to test out a little bit of 4K video playback, so I'm going to turn scaling completely off with Windows 11. This is a 4K monitor and we went with a 4K 60fps video. I like to turn scaling completely off with Windows, so uh, Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner is a bit small right now, but we will take a look at that once we hit about 6,000 frames. So far, even on the initial load-in, at 4K 60, we have zero drop frames. So I'm gonna let this play out for a little bit. We'll get a bit closer so we can check that out. And just as I thought, we're good to go with 4K. You can see our viewpoint is at 4K. The video is a 4K 60 FPS video. We're at about 7,000 frames with zero drop frames. And this is over Wi-Fi. I'm connected to my AC network in the house. Next thing I did was run a few benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1394, multi, 4888. For a little quad-core 8-thread CPU, not doing a bad job. Now I want to move over to some 3D benchmarks. And with this, remember, out of the box, this is running in single channel. So I did want to do a test between single versus dual. Just to give you an idea of how much this does affect iGPU performance, I've run 3D Mark Night Raid with single channel RAM. The only thing that's changed here is the RAM only being one stick. We're still at 16 gigs. We got a total score of 9,995. So I went ahead and installed dual channel RAM, two 8 gig sticks running at the same speed, and our score jumped up to 14,810. Our score was upped by close to 39% just by adding an extra stick of RAM. I ran one more here. We've got Fire Strike, single channel, 16 gigs, 
2,229, and with dual channel RAM, we got a 3,683. So if you're going to be gaming on a mini PC like this, you definitely want to run dual channel RAM. For everyday normal use, web browsing, email checking, you want to do some video playback, you'll probably never notice the difference. But when you throw 3D games at it, performance will definitely suffer running this in single channel. Alright, so jumping right into some gaming. First up, we have Forza Horizon 5, 720p low. I'm getting an average of 61 FPS. Remember, we are using dual channel RAM with this setup here. We're still at 16 gigs, so we have plenty for these games and the VRAM with this built-in iGPU. And they've actually got the TDP set up pretty nicely on this little mini PC. Sometimes you'll see them with a very low TDP to keep that CPU nice and cool. I have seen temps up to 75, but uh, you know, that's kind of normal with these mini PCs. But we are keeping the clocks on that CPU and GPU, which is really the most important part about it. Next up, we have the original Skyrim 900p medium, and I haven't seen a dip under 60. But when I went up to 1080p at medium settings, I got some dips into the low 50s. But with a medium low mix at 1080p, it can also run into constant 60. I just left it at 900p because in my opinion, it still looks great like this and it runs fine on this little mini PC. I had to throw the new God of War in here. We're at 720p low. We're pulling around 35 watts out of the CPU. Our clocks on that Intel Iris Xe GPU are at 1300, which they should be. And I'm getting an average of 32 FPS, and I have seen it dip under 30 in some circumstances. <laughs> Moving over to GTA 5, and when it comes to the 1135G7, which we have in this mini PC, I've never had really good luck, but when it comes to its big brother, the 1165G7, it definitely does a much better job, but with that, we've got a better iGPU built in. It's not too bad, because we're getting an average of 62 FPS, but again, we're at 720p normal with this one. And the final PC game I wanted to test here was Elden Ring. I have not tested this on XE graphics yet, but it's doing way better than I thought it would. It's definitely beaten out the Radeon Vega 8 graphics that you'll find in some of the 5000 series Ryzen APUs. It's not perfect because we're only at 720p low, but we do get an average of 36 FPS out of this one. Now it's time to move over to some emulation. First up, Dreamcast. I've just set this to 1080p, but we can go much higher with the 1135G7 using the ReDream emulator here. And as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, Dreamcast is good to go on this little mini PC. So let's go ahead and take it up a notch. And we're gonna move over to PS2. Really good PS2 performance on this little chip. We're at 720p using PC SX2 and that DirectX 11 back end. I tried the latest dev build with Vulkan and this little chip here, but uh, DX11 does perform better with these Intel setups with PCSX2. And finally, we have original Xbox using CXBX Reloaded. This is one I do have to mute the sound on, but I was getting some decent performance out of this. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to be able to run every single Xbox game at full speed, even the ones that are compatible with CXBX Reloaded, but a majority of the stuff should run at full speed. So there's one last thing I wanted to test. Since we have Thunderbolt 4 on this, we can connect an eGPU. I've got a Sonnet dock here with an RTX 3060. Yes, there is a cover for it. I just don't have it installed right now. Go ahead and plug that Thunderbolt cable right in. As you can see, everything's spinning up on that eGPU dock and it comes right up on my screen. So HDMI is running out of the GPU here and we've now got an RTX 3060 connected to this mini PC. 
and we've still got those Intel XE graphics, but what we're going to be using here for this last test is the RTX 3060. And when everything's connected correctly, performance is great. Here we have Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, high settings, and we can run well over 60 with it. Now with the RTX 3060 connected over Thunderbolt, we're not going to get the max performance out of it, but it's definitely much better than the built-in Intel XE graphics on this mini PC. So in the end, it's definitely not a bad performing mini PC. I really wish it was running dual channel out of the box. That would help a lot of people out if they ever run into performance issues while trying to run a game, because as you saw with those benchmarks, it can definitely affect how that GPU performs. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Really not that bad for what we're getting here. And uh, if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Nook Box 2, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.